You're listening to a podcast of Master Your Finances with me, Kurt Baker, a certified financial planner professional. Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. on 1077thebronc.com. Good morning and welcome back to another edition of Master Your Finances, presented by Certified Wealth Management and Investment. I am Kurt Baker, a certified financial planner professional located in Princeton, New Jersey. I can be reached through our website, which is www.cwmi.us, or you can call me directly at 609 609- 716-4700. This week, very pleased to have with us uh, Mike and Gabby Johnson. Uh, Mike, as uh, basically you guys started Your Town Tube, which is the number one viewed all local website in New Jersey's number one viewed all local social media website with over 3.4 million plus hits per month and 15,000 plus videos continuously showcasing the people, places, businesses and events of the Princeton region, present and past. Your Town Tube is the only all local, all video website, the only local social media that daily distributes and promotes all video content to a large local audience of targeted high quality potential buyers, including exclusive partnerships with the Princeton Mercer Regional Chamber of Commerce and the Independent Business Alliance and Real Estate Business Alliance including the Princeton Mercer area's only VPod and the exclusive Princeton Mercer local influencers. YourTownTube.com is the only local C- uh, social media that tells your story in living color, sight, and sound to connect, engage, and expand your local audience and customers. And now introducing uh, Fit um, and Be well, tube.com featuring... Princeton Regional, all local, all video, fitness, wellness, fashion, beauty, and more. They keep it real, keeping it local, yourtowntube.com. And you've been in business for over 40 years, diverse fields. Uh, Mike loves basketball and baseball and played at PSU and coached several youth programs. And you have a MBA from Penn State University. And also with you is your lovely wife, Gabby, um, who has uh, also a, a a local tube and I am here to help. And uh, she's a local influencer, experts, educator, and women's leader in fitness, fashion, wellness, and health. The platform makes sure that your video content is seen and shared by local community, grown uh, locally, and also that you may stay foremost in the minds. And geographic, the distributor covers uh, a hyper-focus centered in the Princeton Mercer region, also reaching between Philly and New York City including Bucks County and the shore. The audience uh, is business to business as well as business to uh, consumer influencers, educators, women leaders, technology leaders in business, and finally targeting all within the geographic area. Additionally, you are a sister site to the Princeton's mega popular all video website, which is yourtowntube.com. And that has over 3 million viewers monthly. Uh, FitFabAndWellTube.com is an all-video marketing content educational website, fitness, yoga, fashion, beauty, wellness, and health. And uh, you also love Swiss, Swiss, Switzerland and Swiss chocolate, if I could say that. <laughs> so <laughs> I appreciate you guys coming on. You guys are amazing. I know you guys support the Princeton Mercer Regional Chamber of Commerce. You videotape all the luncheons, and you really help to promote local businesses. I know you run the, the site there and you get a lot of, um, you know, we have content, like people have something that's going on. They can send you the video, they upload it. And it's great because it's um, local businesses publishing things about themselves, whether it's just kind of tips about their business, uh, promotion about an event they might be having and that kind of thing. And it, I think it's really great because some of the larger ones, um, you kind of get lost, so to speak. But this one, if you go there, Boom. It's all the stuff that's going on in our area. And it's really easy to find. And oftentimes you'll see a lot of the people that you know and events like, wow, that's really cool. I'd love to go take a part of that. Right. So that, it works both ways. And you guys have done an amazing job. So my question is for you first, how did you get I mean, this is amazing. I mean, you got YouTube out there, which is kind of this mega company. And you said, well, let's go just take on this mega giant. Right. Um, how did you guys get started? And you did a, you were successful at that. How did you get get started in this whole business? Um and that led to this huge success that you've had. Well, uh, it was I was on a bike ride actually, and uh, YouTube had really just been around for a few years, and um, I noticed that somehow um, 
before the bike ride, I had been looking at YouTube and I noticed a restaurant on there. I remember La Hira's restaurant, which was a, a staple of Princeton for a long, long time. And they had done a video, which was like the first video I ever saw from the Princeton area of a merchant. And it happened because I was actually searching on YouTube thinking like, well, is there any videos about the Princeton area on YouTube? And I looked and I got the, the video of La Hira's. Well, anyway, it was like two years old. And it was like a, a really beautifully produced video. It probably cost them like three or four thousand dollars, and it had twenty six views. Oh so my word! Three, so that that means like probably the owner saw it ten times, uh, the people in the staff saw it another fifteen times, and then I stumbled on it twice. So that probably made up. I don't know if the counting's right, but that probably made up all twenty six views. It probably didn't get any views of the local community people that actually they wanted to attract to come to the restaurant and see how great it was. And it was a video that was produced, I would say, over like three different sittings where they had interviews, they had menus, they had everything. And I, I was just, it was just bothering me as I was taking my bike ride. I said, wow, you know, video is where it's going to be at for sure. And these guys just spent a lot of money, but there are thousands of people that view normal YouTube videos that are global. This local video got like nothing. So it's not going to make sense for a local market to do videos, pop them on YouTube among the, and then it was just thousands of videos they had. Now they have millions. So it's even worse. Uh, so I, I came back and I, after the bike ride, and I said to my lovely wife, Gabby here, uh, what do you think if we did something like YouTube only it was like all local and it just had videos of like the local market and just had viewers that were in the local market so that you don't just bump into videos by accident. You actually go there trying to find videos of your community. And she thought it was a really good idea. Then it took a, a quite a time to put it together because especially at that time, making a video website was a really, really tough thing to do. There wasn't like cookie cutter ways to do it. You had to create something really custom. You had to have a huge storage because a video storage is like one after another after another, and you have to keep it up there. It lives forever. So the storage just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, unlike a regular data website where it's just little um, – MBs of data that go for, you know, maybe a hundred per year or something. This is like every video is a hundred or more. So it like goes and goes in the storage. And remember at that time, eight, nine, 10 years ago, uh, the storage was very, very costly. It wasn't like it is today where, uh, you know, you, you're offered like a two terabits of storage for like $200 a month. I mean, back then it was not like that. You didn't have that, that kind of a monster storage. So it was an expensive proposition to do. It still is an expensive proposition to do actually to run every month because you keep adding video and video and now it's more high definition video. So it's even bigger files. Like now the files are a gig and more a lot. Uh, so the, the way we started it was, we, we've had that idea. We put it together. It was a very difficult thing to put together. It was an expensive thing to put together. And then we decided, okay, we got it together. Now let's go out there and get all the videos that the Princeton area must have because they're so sophisticated. Well, they didn't have any. <laughs> like, <laughs> like nobody had videos. It was like I, I thought because that restaurant had done it and the Princeton market is so sophisticated with the educational opportunities around here and all the great merchants and all the great arts and entertainment and all that stuff, like everybody would have videos. Well, yes, Princeton University did. And so if I wanted a site that was just going to have Princeton University videos up there, that could be done really easy. But then we decided that we luckily we had a background in videography, both of us. And we said, you know what, we're going to have to make videos for people ourselves in the beginning because these people don't have many videos. So the way we started in the beginning, I know I'm not getting my wife in her word word and edgewise, but she will in a second. And she can tell about this process. So we decided that what we're going to have to do is take video equipment ourselves, go around the neighborhood and film the merchants, film the arts, film the entertainment, film the events, because nobody was filming these things. And I guess it, it made some sense because there wasn't any local video medium for them to put it on, and people weren't on, on a local basis that used to YouTube yet, except if you were chasing a cat around the house. It wasn't really a business-to-business -business type thing. And I didn't think that part through. I thought, well, these businesses, they're very savvy. They must have videos. So what we did in the beginning, and we still do this on a more limited basis, is we just went out in the field and told people, hey, you want to have a video made of your business? And it was like, okay, what's the catch? You know, how much is it going to cost? No, it's free. Nobody would believe that. It, it used to take us like 20 minutes to explain, no, we're not kidding. This <laughs> is free. We're going to do a video, and then we're actually going to get it viewed for you. 
And we even had some people that would turn it down, believe it or not, because they didn't believe it. They thought there was some catch to it. Okay, yeah, it's going to be free now. And then next month, you want to charge me $200 a month. But that's not the way it was. So for, for a few years, we operated with really uh, no, almost no income because we had to build up the volume of what we had on the website. And uh, as Gabby will know, we did many things to do that, uh, special things like holiday guides. We'd go around and film what everybody had for, for a holiday season. We did, geez, we did holiday guides. We did Father's Day. We did Mother's Day. We did Valentine's Day. We did back to school. We did weddings and, and special events. We did, I don't know, we did so many guides, uh, sports. And then we put together a lot of different categories and we filmed a lot of different events that were put on by different charities like your, like your own. And uh, um, many, many uh, events that happened with uh, educationally with Princeton University, like we, we went and filmed their P-Raid and, and uh, different reunions and all kinds of stuff like that. And so that's how we built the library. The first library was kind of just a free job of us filming over 500 videos in the first couple of years. We filmed over 500 free videos. And then, of course, it was our job to also bring them back. And we had them on tape in those days. It wasn't even a digital format. So you had to get the tape. You had to get the camera with the tape. You had to bring the tape back. You had to put it in a special box. You had, you had to upload it, download it. You had to put it, uh, uh, you had to edit it in Final Cut Pro, which was not even that sophisticated at that point. So some of the things that we had to do, and Gabby was the, was the one that edited all of them. I never edited one video. So I got to say my work was like selling this idea and then helping with the camera work. She's really the camera person. She's really the editor. And in fact, the master of our finances is actually her too. I just want to tell you that. <laughs> don't don't think I'm the guys, master. I'm well, not the master of the finances. That's an amazing story. We're definitely going to continue with that. You're listening to Master Your Finances. We're going to be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Master Your Finance. I'm here with Mike and Gabby Johnson. Uh, you guys told an amazing story. I think a couple of things came to mind when you told the story. One was I just remember years ago when they talked about how like the big newspapers kind of owned everything. And they talked about how the community newspapers were going to kind of take over. And, and that was an argument that went on for a long time. And now you see a lot of the community ones thrive and the larger ones are kind of having trouble because you can get the made, you can get the national lose like on your phone or in a heartbeat. Right. But that local hyper local stuff, you really have, you know, you need to go to a specialty place. You want to go to your community newspaper that talks about like how your kid's team did it, you know, at the baseball game or whatever the case may be. And you want to get that local stuff. And you guys actually took that kind of the next level. Because two things you did. One is you realized that hyper local was the trend and, you realize that video was a trend back when we were all walking around with a flip phone if we had one at all. And nowadays people take videos all the time. Back then we forget that that was kind of a big deal getting the camera for the family and videotaping the kids. And then you had to worry about, you know, running out of tape and all this other stuff. It, it was, it was kind of a little bit of a pain. And then once you taped it, now what do you do with it? I mean, you couldn't just put it on the web or anything like that because you had it on one medium and you had to transfer to another. I just remember that was a nightmare, right? In fact, I'm even now like still transferring some of my stuff to digital because it's still on those old eight millimeter tape things that you had and things like that. Um, so I thought it was interesting. So kudos to you on two fronts. You got two things right at the right time and you guys did an amazing job. So so you got you got the concept. You had to actually create the con. You created the platform, which back then a lot of us don't even remember that. It, it, that was hard. Right. You didn't just pick up a, a WordPress template and throw it up and throw everything no. on it and have a hosting site go take care of it. You had to do all that yourself. Right. It was very hard. And then and then you had to create the content. So that's a huge learning curve on two aspects. I'm just I'm very impressed with all that. So and how was that go through that whole process? You were doing you were taking on a lot of challenges at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I got to tell you. <laughs> and we didn't think we'd have to create the content. See, when I wanted to start it, it was like, OK, we're going to put it up and, you know, you build it and they will come. <laughs> it was like, right. So I was going to put it up and then I, we were going to have be flooded with videos from everybody because everybody had them. Right. Mm -hmm. But no, YouTube made it seem like everybody had them. But in reality, everybody didn't have them. And uh, so we went around doing that for free. And in fact, uh, because nobody, like today, we're doing this Zoom call. And people are now used to it because of COVID-19, doing Zoom calls and getting their, their backgrounds ready and, and getting a microphone and, you know, getting everything that they look good and, and all that. But then when we went to take videos with people, so many people were not used to what they had to do doing videos. It would be like 20 takes 
just to get somebody to say a goodbye statement. It was, I'm not, <laughs> got you, right? It was amazing. Like we would be there and we'd say, okay, we're a lot in like 10 minutes for this guy's video because they just need to show us this little part of their shop. And it was like, it was like a two hour video. It was like, dude, <laughs> say goodbye. You know, and I was like, but it, they wouldn't do it. And it was like, they didn't know how to introduce it. Sometimes they would have a script and they'd read straight off the script and it would be like, <laughs> well, that's not that interesting. <laughs> you <know? Right. laughs> you got to like look up once in a while. And it was funny because you had to teach video, teach people how to actually be on a camera mm -hmm. for video. And you had to teach them, you know, how to show things for video because nobody in a normal shop. Now, re remember, we go into a normal shop in Princeton and it's not even the owner of the shop that we're talking to a lot. We're talking to the people that just work there who are going to show us stuff because the owner says, oh, these nice people are going to come around and do a video of you. And somebody who thought they were personable would say, OK, great, they're going to do a video of me. Well, they wouldn't know how to do it. So we would be there. OK, you have to do this and you have to look this way and you have to go do that. And then some of them, after we got done the video, right, Gabby? wanted it to be like a Fellini movie or something, you know, like, <laughs> we just wanted real videos of people doing stuff, but they wanted it spliced here and edited there. And you got to put this in and put, no, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> oh yeah. But we have to look sophisticated. No, no, not on YouTube. You don't have to look, we're not making a real commercial here. It's, and so people didn't understand that concept. Remember that they would think like we're making a commercial of them. And instead, we're saying, no, no, this is just an authentic YouTube video. It's just you being you showing us stuff. And that's OK. But a lot of people didn't think that was OK. They you thought, a great, that's a great point, because even now you talk about the Zoom like six months ago, almost nobody heard of Zoom. Right. And now right. like everybody knows what Zoom is. Uh, but he, but that's the other thing is I remember when we go to these professional workshops and things, they talk about how you have to get on YouTube and you have to get out there and you have to get the word out. And everybody's like, I got to make this finished product and spend thousands of dollars and make yeah. it look perfect. Well, now you you look at the regular television, like the national yes. media. <laughs> I mean, they're getting people on the phone. They got people. Yeah. I mean, most of the content you're watching is kind of like, uh, you know, it's, it's a homegrown, right? It's somebody mm -hmm. on a phone or somebody yes. just walking around, taking video. They put it on the main the mainstream media stuff and everybody's watches it. So we've actually changed our perception of yes. what video was. I mean. I mean, the national media would never dream of putting that kind of stuff out 10 or 15 years ago. They'd be like, oh, my gosh, it's so unprofessional. Right. So we completely altered from this like prefab, like like way of doing things to we just want it to be you. Right. We want yeah. the reality of the of the well, world that's going on. You do. You do want uh, to be authentic, but mm -hmm. you it, it is important to set the scenery and to set the background because it is part of your DNA and what you are selling. So, you know, if, if by example, you are like a uh, a, cl a closet organizer but then in the background of your zoom is like piles and piles of boxes you know people are yeah, not going to that's, that's not a good look <laughs> that's not a good look so to put a little bit of uh, of staging behind especially today with, with the zoom and if you can then use those virtual background but what one of the story we had that was very funny was that you know uh, Curtis when we first uh went out and about filming we went out with the big camera and the big microphone and, and it was everybody. a huge camera and <laughs> and people were scared right yeah they were scared so then they thought we were like some kind of a news show like right. Geraldo Rivera was going to do something so to they, them. they showed open up the vault huh but, right most of the time they will choked when they'll they will need to start so then uh, fi finally the iPhone you know iPhone was really really what it is and and so we say oh we're gonna go out with the iPhone and we're gonna teach everybody how to take their own movie with their iPhone or their smartphone right yeah, good luck. because now it was good resolution you could mm -hmm. do that so it was that, okay resolution it was, it like was 480. Okay, by then it was like 480 but it was yeah. good it was good enough it was good for, enough for the time for that authentic yeah. look yeah. And uh, uh, so then we went, we went back and we went with our, with our iPhone and then the people looked at us and he said, are you not serious? You're not going to yeah, do that weird. with your iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you couldn't win. You know, you go with yeah. the big camera. They were scared. You know, you go with the iPhone. They're like, no, this is not serious. So, so we went with the big camera and then took it with the iPhone. <laughs> so, that's really funny. <laughs> so that it looked good that we had the big camera so they knew we were serious journalists and then we'd take out the iphone and take the actual video with it 
just so we could get it done quickly and you didn't have to edit it and everything on the iPhone. You just popped it because it was already digital. Right. So, uh, you know, you didn't have to use the tape. It was a lot easier for us to do that. Like yeah. sometimes we would do holiday video guides with like 55 or so videos right. of the merchants. We would pop off merchant after merchant after merchant. And, and, and they were was, widely popular. That's and, what gave uh, us our base. Yes. The, this is really what put us on the map. However, it came to a moment where we needed to go to the drawing board again. Mm -hmm. And financially, we couldn't sustain to do to Give everything staff. free. <laughs> uh, right. So, yeah, that was a problem, right? Right. So so then we decided to uh, kind of repackage what we were doing. And this is where we started to monetize the site. And uh, that was a very important crossroad into what we were doing, because not only now that the people were seriously looking at the site, but then the, Pr the Princeton Chamber really came on board. Uh, and now you have all those businesses, the B2B, the B2C that came. And now now, you know, like, okay, I'm a business, I'm an accounting, or I, I'm X and Y business, I want video content. So now we can monetize, now we can offer ad space, we can push your material, we mm -hmm. can provide video packages, and, and you know, and that, have, have some, food on that table, yeah, because our son that, is 18, you know. <laughs> that's something that's unique. Oh goodness, yeah. <laughs> One of the things that we did, which was, was really like, I, I believe, a pioneering type thing, is we, we didn't just give an ad where you just bought an ad. We gave packages where you bought an ad, but you got so many videos with that ad. And that was something that I don't think anybody had ever done before. So in other words, you could buy an ad space for say $360 a month and you'd get like eight videos that we'd produce for you during the course of that year. Um, some all the way up to a, a larger space would be like 15 videos. So we did two things when we started that monetizing is that we still got content and we got good content and people got the bang for the bucks. They didn't just get a banner. They got this video content that they needed. We still do that. But that was the way we really got it pumped out where, where now we decided, okay, we have a great track record. We can show all the videos that we've done for people. Now what we can say to them is, look, we did one for you, but we can do 12 for you every year if you buy an ad space, a package. And the package will be you get an ad space plus we produce so many videos either per month or per year basis. We'd, we'd um, fashion a contract that way. Uh, but the one thing that you guys were talking about, about the Zoom meetings that, that made it where we did the we started telling people the authentic videos are fine is now this has made people feel not only comfortable but it's not unprofessional to just be yourself anymore it used to it used to be that they thought in video it was unprofessional to just be yourself to ever have a dog bark in the background or your kid pop in or, mm -hmm. or something like that now it's not unprofessional anymore it's like real and people right. don't people not only don't mind it but the sincerity of it is really good and really well well taken and it's so much easier now to get a lot more content done. And that's what we're going to be doing with the Princeton area when we bring out this new uh, program that we have to help all the merchants is to try to say, OK, guys, look, what you do is just do your own little video every week. We'll put all the videos together in a program called the Buy Local Connection. And don't worry about it being the slickest video in the world. We'll take it. We'll put your logo on it. We'll put your your information as to how they, they get what you have, either it's curbside or you deliver or whatever it is. And uh, don't worry about having an expensive video camera. You take your phone out. And if you don't want to take your phone out, schedule a Zoom with us and we'll, we'll record it over Zoom and pop in the information. So yeah, no, that's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah no, that's amazing. Do, right, we, we definitely want to talk about that more. Um, you're listening to Master Your Finances. We're going to be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Master Your Finances. I'm Kurt Baker here with Mike and Gabby Johnson of uh, Your Town Tube. And uh, we've been talking about like how you got this thing started. I, I, again, you you had to first create the platform. You created the content. Now, what's, back then, there was really no – you weren't YouTube. You, it was hard to monetize, right? So a lot of times people start things, and you have a business. You have to create a business model. So first you create yeah. the platform thinking, oh, people are just going to throw video, videos on there, and I can monetize it that way. I was, I was assuming you were kind of thinking that. And then you're like, oh, my gosh, they don't even have videos. So now we're going to create the video content. And then you had to hit kind of a enough volume, I'm assuming. So you have a cat in a mouth you know, uh, you know, type deal where you had to get the content on so people would watch it. But then you had to create the content. So so you had to, you, you know, you had to add both ends of that, right? So they had right. to have something to go see. And so you had you basically did the whole deal. Now, you got to a certain point where you're like, hey, I think we got something really here. I think we can now monetize it. So 
you, you so I guess you started selling this. So you did kind of the traditional type media where you said, hey, right, we'll give you a little bit of display information, I'm assuming. And then, but we're also going to help you with the content. Yeah. Which I think is really innovative because I, I remember, again, I remember back then, like creating a video was like, you know, was traumatic. If you told somebody to create a video eight or nine years ago, like, uh, no way. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, right. it, it was like, that's just, that was total trauma. And I think most of us nowadays are so used to doing it that we forget that that was a big project. They do one a year. Way back when. And it was kind of scary. Now we do them all the time. Um, so you really kind of help them with that process. So, so now you kind of do the packages. So, so that's how you get the, how you monetize it. Right. As what I'm assuming. Right. And you create yeah. an actual real business model. And so what did you do once you got that set up? Have you tweaked it at all or have you made any changes about how you kind of work that? Because you were kind of an innovator in that whole process, right? Well, the the biggest thing, the, the biggest key to the whole system, and we did try, try to create a whole system where we couldn't really afford because we had spent so money, so much money to build the site. And then we did things for free for a few years. Right. We couldn't really afford to advertise it on billboards and everything. So we created this system where somebody would do a video and then we would send them the link and we would tell them how to share it among their social media because now social media started in in vogue with facebook and twitter and everything instagram wasn't there yet but it was facebook and twitter there was google plus there was things like that so we not only encouraged them but on a regular basis we would send the the the, the link gets automatically sent out by our website when you put a video up the website automatically thanks you for sending for doing the video sends you the link and asks you to share it and then on top of that we would send follow-ups and say don't forget to share these links then what we would do was we would put together a newsletter with lots of different links in it, send it out to all the people who had links and encourage them to share the newsletter among each other. So in other words, we would build it on social media platforms is how we would build our social media platform by using the links being sent around to other people. And eventually people would go to the website because that's where the link took them. And they would say, oh, gee, a website about Princeton only. That's pretty cool. And then they'd stay and then they'd come back and then we built and built and built. And then we got a lot of community leaders like the Princeton, now it's the Princeton Mercer uh, Regional Chamber of Commerce, people like that to um, do some alliances with us where they would send out our information and, and uh, we then started to also, as you know, film the chamber events and things like that. And when we filmed that event, it's hosted on our website and embedded on their website from our website. So that gets us a lot of viewers. And then we started to do a lot more of the uh, intersharing between the different uh, the different merchants and their consumers. And then we even put buttons on our website where right under the window when your video plays, you can click Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. And it, and it brings up your own Twitter or your own Facebook and automatically creates the tweet or the Facebook uh, text for you and the link to your video. So now you can do one click where you just go on there and you share everything. You don't even need us to send you the link. So it's really, really easy. And that's how we build our audience is by having other people that put videos up there get an audience for their video and that audience brings people to our website so what we do is, is we have different programs now which i was saying about the buy local connection what that does is that is an inter-sharing program that the merchants will share each other's video content among their own social medias so for instance if you have somebody that has five thousand facebook and uh, somebody else has 5,000 Facebook. Now, if they share each other, now they got 10,000 Facebook. So uh, that's a big deal because that brings more people to our website, but it also brings more people to their videos. And we've done lots of different studies where people still, of course, put their videos up on YouTube, not just on our website. And we encourage that, actually, because you can get a, a global audience if that's what you need also. Mm -hmm. We've done studies where we have videos up there that normally if you have a local video and you put it up on the same video on YouTube, the same video on our website, you will get 10 to 200 times more local views on our website than you will get on YouTube. Uh, and we've had videos that we've studied head to head where they have like 35 views on YouTube and they have like 3,400 on our website. So it, it is quite a bit of a difference where people from this community get to actually see and share and be seen in this community and not worry about wading through all the different videos that YouTube presents and all the ads video presents. But uh, we still 
we still function on the same the same principles that we started with. It's only gotten a, a lot bigger of how we do because even in those first guides that we did, the holiday guides that we went out and filmed even on our phone, we did a really massive sharing program among everybody that got their video. And we, we even put out the link for the whole holiday guide for everybody to share the link to the entire holiday guide. And that means other people's 5,000 Facebook would now see everybody's videos at once. And that's the kind of programs that we do on a regular basis. We call that the VPod. We also have the Princeton Mercer Local Influencers, which is a trademark. For, uh, you know, these are people that have a, a very big following in the Princeton Mercer area. They can be signified as a Princeton Mercer Local Influencer. And the VPod is a bunch of people at once who share each other's videos among themselves. And these are normally members of the chamber that are uh, board members and people like that who have a good following in, in the business community. We do a lot of business to business on our website and a lot of business to consumer. It's not like a YouTube website where there's more, a lot of individual people doing individual things. And now they're doing a lot of individual marketing things, but uh, it's not a, a website that, uh, how do I say it? It's, it's a website that really caters to the Princeton community in terms of its arts, its education, its merchants, its business, its commerce. Uh, so it's a serious website. It's not a bunch of cats chasing dogs around that look pretty cool. Although I like that. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to put that up there, I'll put it. it's great. <laughs> but nobody does. They put up stuff that's more a little more serious normally. They're local yeah. cats and dogs, right? Yeah, no, they, no. they'd have to have Princeton <laughs> around their neck. But uh, it is a huge, so it has been like a huge transformation right now uh, with, with COVID where people has totally have totally engaged into creating their own content because through Zoom, they can really video themselves so they don't have all that matter to think about, you know, I take my camera, is the sound good, is this? They do it through Zoom. They send us the file and, and you know, we upload them for them. And and uh, meaning the the quality of content and, and education that has come to the platform since the last few months is, uh, you know, humongous. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, really great people that are uh, video creator content, and uh, and we're very proud of our community. We, we love our community. Yeah, I want to. I want to just. Yeah, you brought up a really important subject. Uh, I want to go back a couple months to like you know February March that transition we started hearing about the COVID issue, and so what were your thoughts when that first happened, and how did you see it play out? That because, as you pointed out, we've really changed. I mean, businesses still need to operate. We still need to network. We still need to connect with each other, but we're doing it in a very different way depending on your business, right? So it sounds like you've seized that opportunity. So I'm curious about what happened when you first started seeing this this issue developing and what were your thoughts initially? And then how did you plan as you started to see things uh, develop? Well, actually for us, it's made it more convenient to do business because we do all video business. Now we can do all video business via the computer and the cameras and the microphones without having to go out in the field at the same time and do that hold on we got a, other phones going on here at once <laughs> sorry <Keep> it real. <laughs> yeah, that is real that's authentic right there so uh it, and then what happened is is that zoom came along mm -hmm. so at first it was like okay now we have to teach teach really teach vid people how to do videos via their smartphone they have to know how they can do some lighting effects and and uh, get things well and, and they can't do it up and down, they have to do it horizontal and all that kind of stuff, you know. Right. So we so we taught people, and, and Gabby has just come out with a series of tips that uh, she's running in video of how to do different things with your smartphone. So it's made us have a, a, a better avenue to educate people who are now willing to listen to how do we do videos without having a video crew come out and actually take our videos. How can we make them look at least decent and come through? And that's what it has, it has helped us in that regard is that it's made business more convenient for us. And then it's also made it better for the merchants, these new programs that we're coming out with for the merchants. Now they actually know how to do things better via Zoom and with their phone and they're not embarrassed about it anymore by saying, oh, people would say that's unprofessional if I'm just sitting at home doing a Zoom video. Now it's not. So now they can get across what they do for your community. Like for you, you for instance, 
when you come on a Zoom interview with us and tell us about your business, your charity, it's no longer unprofessional for you to be sitting in an office just telling us about that without big lighting and six microphones and a boom <laughs> over your head and all that stuff. It's no longer that. It's great. And people like hearing it and they know you're sincere. You're talking like a real human being and you don't have to have four different camera angles and, you know, to, from one to the next or anything like that. And it makes it easier for us. So, so to come back to the point, uh, your starting point question was actually when COVID hit and everybody was in confinement, of course, our client, we, we had conversation and dialogue with our advertisers and our sponsors. And, you know, where are we going from there? And everybody was, you know, on, on a on a halt, you know, on a stop. And, and, and in this moment, it was like, what are we going to do? How are we going to be doing it? Uh, and uh, this is where we came. Mike, again, is the idea guy. So he came up with the idea, listen, we got to help those people out there to have a voice while they cannot have a voice. And this is where we came up with the show must go on. So since COVID and the, the confinement, we have been producing one after the other, uh, the show must go on and it's basically a profile piece on the person that is interview. And I think that this has really given a lot of hope uh, to our community, to the guests that is coming on, on the show. But again, if you take the platform and how we have built up the platform and the multi-level of distribution that we have, that material now is distributed all over the place. So when you come on the show, must go on, then that piece goes very, very far around and way beyond Princeton. So I think that has helped a lot. Yeah, and the other thing is, you know, obviously our community monetarily have the, the merchants struggled because the restaurants couldn't be opened, and, it's, and at first the restaurants weren't open at all, uh, and people like that, car dealers, etc. And we have a lot of those people are advertisers, and we basically said, look, just don't worry about your contract. You can resume it when you can resume it, but we're not going to take your ad down. We're going to keep it up for you. Uh, we're going to do everything else we used to always do in the background for you. And then when you're ready to come back monetarily, and some already have, you can just come back. And, and we didn't, we weren't about to uh, just suspend their contracts and or, or say, hey, you owe us the money for this month. Or, right. And we weren't about to take their ad down. That would be heartless and ridiculous. I, mean, yeah, no, I, wanna, to I definitely want to get into that. we got to take a quick break. Uh, but yeah, we'll come right back. Uh, you're listening to Master Your Finance. Welcome back. You're listening to Master Your Finances. I am Kurt Baker here with uh, Mike and Gabby Johnson. And we've been talking about uh, how you developed this great platform, a local YouTube, which has been enormously successful. And especially business owners have really gotten involved in this. I know we see you with the Princeton uh, Mercer Regional Chamber. The luncheons are recorded. For some reason, I missed the luncheon. You can go see the video later on, which is fantastic. And you do a lot of promoting locally, which is amazing. And, and I've been to the site many times, like everybody else in the area, and you find local great content. Um, I think right now, one thing that keeps coming up, I know, is that everybody's business model has changed a little bit, right? Either a little bit or a lot, depending on where you kind of fit into society. Of course, like a restaurant's got a huge changes they're making. Other people, maybe not as much of a change as far as the way they're functioning, but we still have to do business, right? And so I think one of the things that happens if people are concerned, they immediately just start, they start pulling in the expenses. They're like, I got to pull everything in. Um, and typically one of the first things to go is marketing. But nowadays, you can market through social media for it's relatively inexpensive, right? It's actually a pretty cheap way and a very effective way to get your name out there. So do you have any recommendations about that? Because I know me personally, I, I, I like a lot of business on you're struggling because you're doing your work, you get busy, you're doing your work, but you're supposed to maintain all this stuff. You're supposed to create content. I know you guys do that kind of thing and you've got to get it all put together. Even though theoretically it takes a little bit of time, you have to do it and you need to promote yourself. So now that we've all had a little time to maybe think about our strategy. I think every business owner I know has spent some time rethinking their business strategies through the last few months. So what have you guys learned through yourselves as well as your clients as far as the things that they've been doing to kind of um, get better through all of this? Well, for, first, I think that uh, in, in question of video content uh, creation, I will take this this one, then Mike yeah, can let her follow. Take it follow <laughs> but i think that yes you are absolutely right curtis uh right now with the with the 
help of Zoom, we have been able to offer uh, video recording and editing packages through Zoom to people that want to create on a regular basis. So it is a subscription base. Every month they are on a subscription and, and depending how many videos they want, they, 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 they'll choose their level. But it will guarantee them to have some content created and then that that creation is of course distributed locally and uh, and all around and then they can still use it uh, and embedded on their website and so on and so on and then of course you know we have uh, other things and again uh, we talked about uh, the buy local uh, connection uh, we really want to help our community to stay in business it's vital for our community our shops our restaurants our small businesses they need to stay in business so we pivot a little bit to look about how you have been doing your marketing we are taking that connection that the buy local connection and it's a little bit allowing you to put your promotion you sell uh, your offering whatever your video content is created upon a promotional piece and then that is distributed well let me tell you how, how that works it's really simple so because there's no more like just cruising around the streets of Princeton like it used to be and going into the shops in and out and going into the restaurants in and out and because there's, there's not even indoor dining really uh, so we don't know when that's gonna happen is we created this by local connection what it is is people can either via their smartphone or make a brief interview appointment with us on zoom and make either a one to three minute video once a week and we will take that video put all the videos in a in a single newsletter send that out various different mailing lists email it out there put it on all the social media platforms and then have the merchants share that newsletter among themselves so that everybody can see what the merchants offer in our community personally it's not a google thing anymore people actually see what the merchants have they see their menus they see recipes they see tips the merchants can do anything they want once a week all they have to do is take the video via their smartphone and just give it to us you know upload it on our website or just send us a link Link to it or they can make a zoom appointment with us and we'll quickly within five minutes take a one to three minute video of them add their logo into it add how they can get it whether it's curbside pickup or come to our store we're allowed this many people in our store or we'll we offer takeout of our restaurant etc and we will put all those videos every week and send the newsletter out twice a week because what we do is we'll send it out to a mass list of thousands. Then I see who did not receive it or did not open it. Then I send it out again to the people that did not open it yet. So we will send that newsletter out twice, plus then give everything to the merchants so that they can share it among their own social media platforms, therefore giving it tens of thousands of more views. And then also, each merchant gets to keep their videos. We'll give them a copy of their videos and market themselves however they want to among their own social medias, put it and embed it on their website, do whatever they want with it. So what it's doing is encouraging the merchants to actually put out a video snippet of themselves at least once a week. And if it's one week they can't do it, we'll rerun something that's still relevant. But we'll put them all in this common newsletter. We're also going to have a section on our website called the Buy Local Co Connection, and that's its own channel, so that people can click on that channel and see all the videos that forever the merchants have done about themselves. And and what we'll do is we're going to edit that, edit their videos for them, promote their videos for them, get their videos viewed for them, and then we're going to also work with with people like the Chamber of Commerce and also the Princeton Merchants Association to also develop and and disseminate this information. And we're doing that all for a ridiculous fee of nineteen dollars a month for the merchant. Wow! We just want to do that to have a nominal fee because if you don't have a fee. Right. then they won't get serious enough about it to do it. If they're, if they're in a certain club membership, and remember, it's $19 a month, but they have to uh, subscribe for the year. Mm -hmm. So it's either $19 a month or they can pay $199 up front and they get the whole year. And that way they will consistently do what they should be doing anyway, which is putting out video content about what they have to combat the Googles and peoples of the world. Not, not that there's anything wrong with Google, because I, I mean, not, not Google, Amazon. Not that there's anything wrong with that because I use Amazon Prime a lot. 
but they've also <laughs> the area also has to support our local merchants and our local service people and our local restaurants and learn what they have to offer that's unique because we have a lot of great individuals in this Princeton Mercer region they have a lot of great ideas in their shops they have a lot of great things that people cannot really get anywhere else or if they can get them anywhere else they're very inconvenient to actually get and we've got to show people that it's still convenient to shop Princeton. It's still convenient to get the great food around here and the great services of the people that do great things in this area because it was a robust com uh, community of commerce here. We had a really, really great situation going on before COVID-19 hit with the university and everything. Now we have not a ghost town, but something that's not as robust as it was and they must still get their stuff out there personally, face to face, even when they can't do it face to face. And we're giving them an opportunity to be face to face when they can't be face to face. And like I said, we're only doing a nominal administrative cost of $19 a month. It's going to be sponsored by, uh, by corporations, the whole package, but we don't want the merchants to be strapped anymore. So we're just giving them a fee so that they're serious about doing it and make sure they do it, but not enough where it's gonna financially strap them at all. So it's a very easy situation where they get regular video content. They're encouraged to do their own regular video content that they can use everywhere, but also use it in the buy local connection. Yeah, it's amazing. You just solved several problems. Once you're getting the content out to like your mailing list, plus they could put it on their own social media. So now you have your own like pre-made, so to speak, social media. So you can get that out and you can talk about anything, right? I mean, if you're a restaurant, I guess you can talk about the specials of the week, right? What we're putting out there. I mean, if you're a retail operation, what we're selling and it might be interesting. I know me as well as a lot of the people I know, we always try to buy something locally. And then we go to the Amazon if we can't find it, right? So I always try. And if mm -hmm. for some reason you can't find it, then you're like, okay, I got to go to a larger operation that, that I can find it because it might be something that it just they just don't have. And we don't know today about problem. the convenience of things. Yeah. In other words, it's not really that inconvenient, if you, if, especially if you already know what you want. So right. say a merchant has some really unique things that just came in and they get to put this one minute video out this week mm -hmm. saying, hey, look what we have here. This is pretty cool. And we can and just order it and we'll do a curbside pickup. You come down, you pick it up at curbside and that's bingo. You got it right away. You don't have to wait for shipping. You don't have to get mad at Amazon because they didn't deliver your package in two days. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to go through a robo call. You don't have to do anything like that. Just order the thing or call us on the phone. Tell us when you want to come in and pick it up. And there's ways that that are convenient today to get things and merchandise that the merchants have. But if people don't know what's in their stores. They don't know what's in their restaurants because they can't physically see it right now. So we're going to give an opportunity to them to present physically and with living sound and color what they have. And that way it should induce people to say, hey, I can still shop in the Princeton area and it's actually not that inconvenient for me. And I won't get COVID-19 doing it as it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, that's just incredible. I think once again, you're at the cutting edge. <laughs> I have to give you credit because that that's really, I think, where we're headed. And honestly, I can see that being a value even when COVID is not here any longer because some people may, for one reason or another, they're just too busy. I might work in New York City. Wouldn't it be nice to know that that thing that I want to buy is right there at locally? I can go pick it up at some point myself. Um, you know, so there's a. I think there's there's value to that even beyond the, the COVID thing. Well, I think yeah, we're learning new skills now that I think something. we can continue to use going forward and just make things better for everybody. Right. Yeah, that is something that we that we want to do continually. We don't want to right. do it with COVID, and we'll even have a question and answer section that con consumers can even ask questions of the uh, of the people and we'll put that in the newsletter so that people maybe their next video they will answer the question that the consumer had via a video so the consumer might say do you have this or can you do this and then that person can get on there and that's an easy content video for them to make yes curtis baker says yeah i can do that if you come down here i will wash your feet no you won't do that <laughs> <laughs> with, with my normal with my that new might be portable. a small premium for that one yeah <laughs> <laughs> With my new portable foot wash that we have outside the store. No, but if, if, hey, whatever they ask, right? the merchant might answer work. it. Yeah, the foot wash was probably not a good idea. But <laughs> anything, uh, anything that, that, that they can answer, and uh, it may give content for the merchant to use for the next thing that they right. know somebody's already interested in. Therefore, it gets a dialogue with the community, and people actually can engage with each other again. Where they can't engage with each other physically anymore, they have masks on and all this stuff. Now that you can see people really talking without the mask, you can see their real personality, and you can see what they really have to offer. 
Well, you guys have been amazing. Uh, we're, we're unfortunately, we run out of time. Do you have any final thoughts before we go? No, I thought we would never be able to fill up that time. <laughs> no, we actually, Curtis, we actually uh, wish you a great, uh, awesome, uh, you have an event coming up. Uh, yeah. So we're wishing you good luck with that event. It's uh, when in August? Uh, August, uh, August 29th is our walk for uh, the Mickey and Friends uh, Walk for Air. We have the dog walk coming up at uh, West Windsor Community Park. So thank you for mentioning that for us. But... <laughs> You're welcome. And You're we'll welcome. be filming that, which will be on your town too, boss. That's also. right. You guys are going to be there. Even after the event. But yeah. go to the event and do great things for these people that really do great stuff for the community. That's right. Sweet. Well, you guys are amazing. I appreciate everything you're doing. Uh, you've been listening to Master Your Finances. You can subscribe to this podcast, listen to all our podcasts by going to masteryourfinances.us. Remember, together we can master your finances so you can enjoy financial peace of mind. That's really hard to do, get financial peace of mind, by the way. <laughs> That's what I do, man. <laughs>